Hi guys, so um, I'm inviting Kelly. Just give me a minute. Um, all right, so I'm inviting Kelly. Hi guys. So we're just waiting for Kelly to join us. I just invited her, so she should be showing up soon. Hey, Chaylin. Hi, Jenny. Hey, Jen. My other Jen. My beautiful Jen. <laughs> Both of you. <laughs> see. Hey. I'm so excited about this talk, you guys, because it's um, it really is about non-duality. And, you know, a lot of the times I, I want to talk to you guys about this is that um, we tend to forget that we've animated everything. And so in that case, we're holding each other. Uh, we're holding someone accountable. And um, unfortunately, that happens to be the shadow and not the person who's actually responsible. And so that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, I think Kelly's here. She's gonna be joining us. Hey, hey. Hi, I think I'm there. Hi. Hi. Yay, hi. <laughs> I think you're upside down some way, sideways. Okay. Oh, I just sideways, okay. Oh, there we go. There. <laughs> Trying not to. I have to hold my phone in my hand. So yes. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Here I am. Hi. Hi. So you guys, um, I'm really excited about this. Um, Kelly and and a lot of a lot of you, I've gotten a chance to get to know really well, and we've kind of formed these bonds. I feel like um, and. Kelly and, and Jen, um, Maria, uh, all of us, we're, 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 we're somewhat like soul sisters. And actually that list is much longer than I've mentioned, but um, I, I wanted to talk to you guys about this double-mindedness because I think it's a great topic. It was something that Kelly has a lot uh, to share about as well, I think. Um, and I think in terms of, of, this idea of double-mindedness is again think about it we tend to um animate uh everything and forget that we've done that and so this is what that's about today you know um i guess kelly i was wondering if you could give me an idea of what you thought um being double-minded is you know it's it's so many things um you know, it can be it can be very obvious. Like, um, if you're talking about a person, uh, a specific person, it could be wanting them and not choose, trying to choose between um, two different people. It can be that, but really, it is it is when you're animating um, you're animating both sides of the situation. So the wanted part of it and the part of it that you don't want. So what's old dead matter. Like um, a couple of weeks ago with, with my husband, I was, I was animating like I wanted us to be together, but what I didn't realize was I wasn't forgiving myself for some, some things, for the way things ended, ended. And so I was double-minded in, I wanted him, but I, I wanted him to forgive me, but I wasn't forgiving myself. And so that's double-mindedness. Um, I think we think of double-mindedness in, in a much simpler way than that. We don't realize how subtle it can be. And that's what it was for me. And so what I was doing was I couldn't figure out why he would come closer and then he would pull away and he, and he was hot and cold until Cindy walked me through through that. And I didn't want to look at that because it was so painful, but I wasn't forgiving myself. Um, it, it's subtle, but I would say that most times when, our, when we're having either hot and cold behavior or we're just can't kind of move the needle, double-mindedness probably is at the root of that in some way. Wouldn't you say, Sin? 
Definitely. Definitely. Um, a lot of times it's um, a lot of times when you when you guys speak to me, you'll say I might be stuck in a specific situation. Um, and then you'll tell the story and not realize that everything you just said is what you're animating. Right? It, it's right. so sneaky because we think it was there before we arrived. And it wasn't, it, it wasn't, it just appears that way because it's so instant. And that's what I'm asking people to do now, you know? Yeah, yeah, well, the, um, yeah, that's the, the, the thing of it that I realized too, um, over, like, Cindy talks to us about the blank moment. And I realized, I kept thinking that it was like these big things, like obviously once I worked with that, well, that's an obvious blank moment. but. The truth is, every single moment is a blank moment. Somebody just said the audio is jumping around. Yeah, I is think that... when I speak, I'm echoing on your on your feed. Oh, really? So I don't know how to mute myself somehow on your feed, and then I guess we'll take turns. Or I don't know what's happening. But... Jen said the sound isn't great. Hmm. I don't know how to fix that. Sorry, guys. First attempt. <laughs> Nobody, we never heard any technological geniuses here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, but anyway, when we're, um, every moment almost is a blank moment. And we have the opportunity to do, it doesn't matter what we animated literally one second ago. It, it doesn't matter because the next moment is your new moment, every single one. And we have this tendency to, once we realize we're doing that, then we're gonna go to the song and dance of like, oh my God, I did that. The ego jumps in and tells you, well now, um, you gotta start all over again. Now you're finally at the beginning of your problem. So all that you did before, you really weren't working on this before now. Now starts your journey back to getting together with your SP. Bullshit. No, nope, yes. not true. Yes. Not true. Yes. And, and honestly, it's not even a process either in um, in how to get past it. The simple fact that you acknowledge it and you saw it is that is the work. You saw it, and that's all you needed to do. You don't have to go in and dig around. It's not like sometimes I think we tend, and this is also double mindedness. We tend to want to blend this kind of work with traditional psychology. They don't work. It'll keep you spinning and spinning. I know because I did it for a long time. It'll keep you spinning your wheels. And really, all you do is go, oh, that's what I was doing? My bad. <laughs> what am I going to create next? And walk right into that new moment. And it, honest to God, it's that quick and that new. In that second, you're brand new. You know, it's... It, it literally is, you put on the new man in that moment. There's no, um, I guess that's what true, true grace and true forgiveness is. You just allow yourself to go, oh, I didn't know I was doing that, and, and then move on. And you'll see, I, I, we're probably all at this point, since we're all working with Cindy, um, it's going to be pretty quickly that you're going to start to see your person or whoever is around you is going to show you instantly that you've made that change. You're not going to have to wonder, did it work? you'll know very, very quickly. So, I mean, I'm seeing things happen instantly almost. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about that. So what, if, what would you say is different about what we do here, you know, than other coaches? <laughs> I only ever coached with one other person. Um, gosh, this is the... If you're talking truly what I view as strictly Neville um, coaches, to me it lacks, they see it on a very antiseptic, two-dimensional level to me, where they stick very much with the imaginal scene and those steps. Um, but when they start talking about everyone as you pushed out, it is very much like a... Um, the other person doesn't exist as in the other person truly doesn't exist. And that's not at all what is being taught here. The other person exists, and yes, we understand that it's all illusion and everything, but 
the love is really emphasized here, and that makes a huge difference. It's it's a um, I don't know. I like the other because I like the idea. I, I did understand that everyone had been pushed out. It made sense to me, but it it felt very lonely in a certain way. And and when I found and started talking to Sin, I realized like it's what it's what your heart knows. Like this this is this is this is like coming home. I guess that's I, I, it's really hard to put into words. Um, when you talk about if, I mean, I've, I've watched, and I'm probably, I'm sure a lot of other of you guys have watched um, YouTube and all of those other coaches. And honestly, <clears throat> the difference I see there is there's just not, they're they're in techniques and they just don't understand what they're teaching. That's all it is. It's not that, um, it's not that they're wrong. What they're teaching is right. But what we will never know is whether or not the results that they're, they're um, their clients are having are, are sticking. I would, I would bet that that can't be true. It can't be because because with those things you're just putting a band-aid over it. You're, you are bypassing and bypassing and bypassing and these things have come up to be healed. Like the SP journey is one that will cause you to face yourself in ways that um, nothing else will. Because if you're going to if you're going to heal and you're going to be with the same person that you believe caused you so much pain or that you caused them so much pain, say you see it, if that's also another thing that we do. It's like we either we either can't forgive them and we put it outside of us and we view them as the one who inflicted all the pain, or we just do the same same thing, we flip it on ourselves and say, I did something so bad that I can't forgive myself. Either way, we are victim. We're, we make ourselves into a victim that's powerless. Um, we, we keep so much, and I had a tendency to do the latter. I would. I, I was okay with forgiving him, but me, no way. I was not going to give myself a pass on any level. I wasn't going to love myself like that. And guess what? He couldn't either, because I couldn't. And um, yeah, exactly. And so I remember when I was when, when we were before we separated. He used to say to me, "My God, Kelly, are you just you have such a victim mentality. What's wrong with you?" And I thought, the nerve. <laughs> I could. I was a total victim. I was a total victim. Um, and I find myself, I mean, I think we do it really in, in a lot of different ways. And now, um, you know, I can see where I do that. And, and I don't make it a whole process. I want it to be easy. And the, the moment I realize it, I do what I can. I, I don't know. I, you know, I just believe that the moment we notice it is the moment that it's gone. Yes. You know? It is. So, it is. God, yeah. God that's, what's so, that's what's so fun about it, right? In that moment, because it's, it feels like it's the scariest thing we ever do. And the second we acknowledge it and accept it. And that's it. That's mm -hmm. all that you need to do. It is not, uh, the ego would have you think that, it, you know, oh my God, now I have to do this and that, and it's going to be a year for every single thing that comes up. It's not. In the instant that you notice it, that's the instant that it changed, period. Mm -hmm. And you just start walking forward and create what you do want from there. And it's just going to be moving forward. You know, God is, God is, it's all love. Love doesn't create 12 step processes. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's uh I don't know, we, we don't tend to give ourselves the grace that, that is really our birthright. Like we weren't meant to be tortured like this. And we do it to ourselves. We're both there we're both our aggressor and our victim. Like we we, we do both parts. And you know, we pretend that it's the other person but it, it it's not. It's it's us doing it to ourselves and so i guess that's the difference cindy that you you it's just it's love it's always love and love yeah, in the correct love. order right <laughs> love for ourselves yeah. and love for the reflection yeah well it is yeah it is love for self but it's not um narcissistic I, I don't, it's not narcissistic and that was like a, a big thing for me was a lot of coaches there are a few of them that are really they really really found on self-love and i understand what they're getting at 
but it's done in a way that comes off to me as arrogant and belligerent. Um, Almost heartless. Like, Almost heartless. Uh, heartless. Yeah. I mean, and I understand. I understand what they're saying, but but you cannot you cannot understand who you really are. You can't possibly have the understanding of who you really are if you have that kind of mindset, because there is no. Um, there's no, like, there's one coach that I would think of, and, and she's always like, wow, you know, my SP, every every single one of them has come back to me, and I don't give a shit, you know. Uh, he always, they always come back to me, and that's how it is, and, and you know, I'm always, because I'm the one, I'm the queen, I'm the center, and I get why she's saying that. I understand. But it's, love isn't like that. It is gentle. It's kind. It's, it feels good, and, and um the heart knows it when it's home and that's the big thing too that you learn here is that to be heart led i think cindy one of the things that you did the biggest thing for me that you did was help me understand how to hear the voice of god because that was i think that for a lot of us we listen to the world and the first thing we're told is if we break up with somebody you broke up with them for a reason um, especially if they had what is considered bad behavior, you know, narcissistic behavior, that kind of thing. We're told that to want to be with that person again is us being weak and um, in denial and um, just making excuses for the other person. And that's not um, that's not it at all. And, and Cindy, you, you taught me to trust my heart. And me to understand that, that is the voice of God. That's the, that's that's what actually is leading me to the truth. And I always used to say to my kids, you know, always trust your gut. Your gut never lies. But I didn't. I guess I didn't really understand what I was telling them. But it's your heart. And my heart has never, ever, ever led me wrong. So now I'm. You know, I took that course with Chase too, and that was the one thing he said to me our very last session to lead with my heart consequences be damned because your heart if you really want to live you really want to live and it's kind of scary be led by your heart because you can't mess it up you can't mess it up so you know that's what i'm 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 doing like if i want to if i want to text my husband or not or whatever i just do it and and i don't what I have to lose is just me, you know. So I like this. I like this. I, I think I think um a lot of what we learn is to be non-dual. That's the hardest thing in the world. But it it's a, it's a hundred and sixty degree turn around inward. But it allows you to see the mirror universe. Yeah, it does. And it's, um, you've taught me to, you know what you've really taught me is, um, when I start to realize how, how, um, like everyone as you pushed out and, and our thoughts are on display and how everyone, uh, around us, if you're listening and you're paying attention, like that was another thing with the Neville person will say, there are no signs, there are no signs. Bullshit, there are signs everywhere. But there are signs everywhere. The whole entire universe, universe. All three is speaking to you all at the same time. It's talking, it's giving you signs so much that you, if, if it actually spoke in words, it would be so loud, you would be deafening. It's always speaking to you and showing you. And so when you, when you showed me that, like you, you taught me how to see in the dark, I guess. You taught me how to see what I'm seeing and it makes it so much fun and you don't feel alone you don't when you don't think there are any signs and you're sitting there you think you're sitting there in a vacuum and, well how the hell else can you not react then to your shadow when it's still doing the old things that you know it, it it's going to play out some of the stuff that we animated it to do but if you don't understand that there are a million and one okay so your shadow does something where today it, it shows you something that you believed before but if you know and you're paying attention to the signs or whatever, the, the language of God all around you, 
you that you are loved and that you are on the right track and that things are working in your favor, how the hell are you not going to feel like a victim and how the hell are you not going to react then to that shadow? You're absolutely going to because you, you feel alone and that's the loneliest, worst feeling and you feel like you're sitting there waiting for years, some of us, we're waiting for years for something to change, not realizing that everything has changed because we're, we don't we don't know how to see it. And when I when I met you, Cindy, you told, showed me how to hear it and how to see it. And I see it all over the place now. And I just, every day, it's just, it's so much fun. I'm not saying that I don't have down moments, because sometimes I do, but it's so much fun. As soon as I have a down moment, I'm like, what the hell am I, what, what am I down about? It, it can be the funniest thing. It'll be somebody talking or a car drive by with something you know, my, my my husband's initials on the side or just just all kinds of crazy things or other things that I want that I forgot that I wanted showing up or somebody talking to me about it. And I'll be like, holy shit, I forgot that I even thought about that. It's, it's peaceful and it's fun. Like life is really meant to be fun. It, it is. And, Would you um, say it's easier to fall in love with yourself right now? Like, oh I, God, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, when you, you. when you understand everyone as you push out, mm -hmm. and then you start to uh -huh. understand how to hear the voice of God, which is you, and then you start to understand, okay, it, it's not just everyone as you push out. As Neville said, everyone and everything. So all of those things that are showing up around you, it's your own love for yourself. Like, it, it's like the lover who just can't, can't stop gushing over you all the time. All of creation is singing you a love song constantly. And when you start to be able to hear that, how can you not fall in love with you? Yes. How do yes. you not? Yes. How yes. can you not? And um, and it becomes the the most fun. It's so fun to see it all happen. And and. Um, it makes life worth living, you know? I don't know how I lived before that. And then, and now I'm starting to see like the connection that I have with some of the people in this group where it's like, it is like our minds are on the same page and these are people across the world. And it's like, there's there's one, I'm so connected with Jen that it's funny because I'll think it and, and she'll she'll be texting me the answer to something that I'm thinking. And it's and it's so much fun. It's like, it's just fun. It, it's like, it's like a, it's like the universe or God is doing tricks for me just to show me like, it's like the dog, like, look, I can roll over. Look what I can do. Look, I'm here. <laughs> it's so fun, isn't it? It is. It's like, it, is. it literally is magical. And, and, um, I missed it for so long. And now I'm like, how the hell did I ever miss this? Yes. 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 And when you start to see it like that, you can't, you never want to ever, um, animate that part of you that was a victim again because as soon as you step into that the world goes dark instantly all around you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and I think, I think I can say and I'm sure everybody else who's working with Cindy would agree with this it gets harder and harder to shut that off like you just can't can't anymore mm -hmm. you don't want to but you can't and you do for a minute, but you bounce right back to where you were. And it's, it's pretty amazing. I never thought I'd be here. I came from a dark place where, you know, two months ago, I was having a hell of a time getting out of bed three months ago. So, I don't know. <laughs> I needed that one. That feels good. <laughs> It's true. It's true. It's, um, I don't know. I think with this, the difference is too, like I've, I've actually learned what love is. I didn't know what love was before. Like I didn't know what it meant. Since love has no expectations. I was like, okay, I could understand that as in I have no expectations for myself, but I had a lot of expectations of the other person and a hell of a lot of expectations for me. And now it, love just is, it, it just, it just is, you know, it's everything. And it's so much fun. And I, and I've, I've met in this whole group, I've met the most genuine, loving, 
people in the world. And that's not to say we're not, we all come here with our baggage and our crap and everything else and none of it matters. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. And it's, it's so fun. Like I go on Facebook and I'm not, I don't, I'm not really active on Facebook, but I go on and I get to see different people posting things and I can see how they're changing. And it's just so exciting to see, like we're all doing the same things and I'll be, I'll be thinking about something and one of somebody I don't even know who's in this group will, will post it because we're all so connected and it's just so cool. Yes. 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 This is just, I don't know if anybody wants to grow, it's, this is where to be. In my opinion, you know, between this and then the course that we did with Chase, um, yeah, you got, we, this is all meant to be fun and it's, and, and it finally is, it finally is for me. And I don't, and I don't, I'm not afraid that it's going to ever go back to what it was before. Cause I used to be afraid of that, which is also double mindedness, by the way, <laughs> being afraid to be happy, terrified, because if I'm happy, then what happens when it all goes away, that's double minded. And then you can't just live in the joy. Like to not be double minded, I guess is just it's a free fall. Yes. It's a paradox. It's a paradox. It is a paradox. And the other thing is, you know, with, with unforgiveness for the for the shadow, we can't we can't um, we we hold ourselves or the other person, which is both us, we hold ourselves in unforgiveness because we're afraid we want to protect ourselves and from getting hurt and the very thing we're trying to protect ourselves from is exactly what happens. We, we do get hurt because we are not, we're not connecting. Yes. You know? Somebody say, how do I fall in love with myself? Want to answer that soon? Want to just answer? How, how do you fall in love with yourself? You make peace with all of your experience first. There's everyone to forgive. As soon as it's done truly, heartfelt, including yourself, you start to see your experience everywhere. And so it becomes automatic, like Kelly's saying. I would say, I mean, I don't know. I, I think, well, Cindy, we've talked about this. I love Ho'oponopono. Pono. Yes. I love anything, anything that is, um, doesn't require too much of my mind. That is because, and I'm talking, when I talk about mind, I'm talking about ego. Um, because if there's too many words and you're trying to, you can't address something of the heart, you can't talk to the mind about it. So to bypass the mind, and that's some things that Cindy taught me, um, how to do that. And, um, Ho'oponopono, I'm sorry, um, please forgive me, I love you, thank you. If, if any of you have ever watched or looked at that, Dr. Hu Len talks about Ho'oponopono and he calls it cleaning. And that, um... All of that is the vibration or whatever you want to talk about. That's all love. And you can apply that to yourself, to your other person, to a situation. I'm sorry. And, and, and I'll be like, stand in the mirror and tell yourself why you're sorry. What are you sorry about? Like really apologize to yourself for seeing things in that light and um, forgive yourself and, love yourself and list those reasons why you're doing that. And it, and it really does heal it and quickly and you can listen to Ho'oponopono while you sleep on a loop. Florence Scovel Shin is another wonderful one. That was one, the first time I had a coaching session with Cindy, she told me to listen to um, Florence Scovel Shin and she speaks, she speaks universal truths and that will help you too. Do it while you sleep. Bypass your conscious bypass mind. Your brain. Yeah, because it will argue and argue and argue for why these things aren't true. So just just trust, it will seep in, it will. And um, if you're having trouble with that, get out, get a, a hold of Cindy and talk to her because she will walk you, and, and it won't take long. I'm not, this is not, this isn't gonna be uh, 25 sessions in probably, it could be the first, probably the first conversation that you have with her, the first one, you're gonna be night and day different. So you might need maybe three. Then you'll just want to talk to her because she's fun to talk to. <laughs> you know, but 
it, it doesn't take long. So if you're if you're thinking that, don't worry because you already love yourself, or else you wouldn't be here. So that's a trick of your mind. Whoever it was who asked, how do I how do I love myself? You already do love yourself. That's why you're here. That's right. You're just, you're just calling for the trick of your mind that you don't, but you do. You do love yourself. You know. And then um, I was going to say for, for double-mindedness, another form of that is arguing in your head. If you can't, if you cannot work out, if you're having arguments, you cannot pretend to have a conversation, a normal conversation without having some kind of argument. You're being double-minded. You're forgetting to be one and you're going back and forth in duality. And that's the problem because you either own it and change it immediately or you're a victim to your anger, your resentment, and the role that you ask them to play. Those are the two choices. There's no in between. There's not. And that's a hard thing. Um, sometimes it's a hard thing to say to someone when you're talking to them because we all understand this. And you want to be sensitive, and it's like, I know when I talk to somebody about it, and and, and uh, like I don't want to hurt their feelings, and then I, but then I'm wrestling with. Well, the larger thing is it might hurt your feelings in the moment. To say you're doing this to yourself, but the greater damage is done if I don't say it now. Then you keep on, and you just keep adding on to your own sorrow and suffering, and nobody wants to hear that they're the ones doing it but the good news is that if you're the one doing it then you're, you can stop it if you're, not the one, if you're not the one doing it you're screwed like <laughs> then what you're fucked you really are. so true oh kelly you froze oh no well, Kelly froze for a second. I'm sure she'll come right back, but it's so true. It's so true what you're saying. She's saying it's so true. It's like you have to make a choice in that moment, you guys. If you haven't decided you're the one doing it, then you really are technically screwed. You're the victim. And she's 100% accurate on this matter. And it's like what I help you guys do is be non-dual. And you have to make that choice. Are you the operant power or are you the victim? And you will wrestle this out for as long as you need to until it takes for you to recognize that it's always been you. There is no one else. It's you on display and your mirror is your conformation only. That's what it's used for, and that alone. It's to be non-dual so that you don't bypass 3D. Because if you were to bypass 3D, right, in that particular moment, it will come back around. Can you revise it? Sure, sure. Guess what, though? If you move on to another person, it's going to be a pattern all over again. And you get to deal with it just one more time. And that just one more time turns into another pattern and another pattern and another pattern and another pattern until at some point you decide to do something about it. And so that's what I'm offering you guys is a chance to end this sense of duality, a chance to finally be at peace. But that's going to require your forgiveness of yourself. Um, I, I did this recently with um, someone. I, I wrote, I had her write it out. And I said, okay, please write out the following. And she laughed with me, but I said, please forgive myself for imagining such crazy things. That was it. And she started cracking up because in that minute she realized that as long as she was making an outside power out there, she had no control over the situation. She had no, no way to change it. But if you know it is you, it's not about blame. It's about, oh, it's me. That's great news. Instead of, oh, it's me. That's terrible news. There's a very, <laughs> both are true, right? 
both can be true in the sense that if it's you and you don't know it's you, you uphold what you don't want. But if it's you and you know it's you, you can uphold what you do want. And so that's the transfer of power that you guys are looking for. This is the end of all suffering if you understand, okay, there is one mind and two bodies if you have a normal relationship between two people. One mind and two bodies. This other body will always demonstrate who you are and the things that you don't say, the things that you're afraid of, the things that you've grown to resent over the years, anything that you have not said, you have not had the courage to face or whatever, this person will trigger all of these things within you. Okay? Now what we have to understand is this is an act of love because if you don't address it and you don't recognize that both bodies are you, you will be in a situation in which you go back and forth. And the only reason the relationship did not work is this back and forth. Wait, I'm in my power. No, I'm not. I'm in my power. No, I'm not. I'm in my power. No, I'm not. And so you do this dance because you haven't realized that the shadow and the light are one. The shadow being the other body that represents the things you don't know or you are thinking. So that is key and crucial to maintaining um, the understanding of all is one, all is you, and all is love. Because even when they show up as your worst nightmare, if they had not done this for you, it's going to replay in your life. Not only is it going to replay in your life, but the most painful thing in the world is to watch your children repeat and follow in your footsteps. That is the most painful, take it from me, thing to watch when your children start doing the exact same things. When, when maybe you don't worry about your marriage, but then you worry about theirs because you realize that it's the same thing playing out over and over again. So if you have an opportunity to stop this double-mindedness, take it, take it, own it. It's not about being at fault. It's about, oh, okay, I forgive myself for the things I didn't realize I was doing unconsciously. I'm okay. I understand that the consequence of not being loving, of not being honest, of not being authentically me, of being afraid to lose another person, and if we're not being loving, is several scenarios. Fights and arguments. Uh, other chicks. Or dudes, right? Third parties. Uh, narcissism. You guys know narcissism. And I'm not, I'm not encouraging people to stay with a narcissist if that's what has happened. Because sometimes they could be in their own danger. And that's because they have given so much life force to the shadow that they need to get out of their own way. And they're going to need to heal. And so it, I'm not asking you to bypass that, but also understand that a narcissist was made that way because it got so used to having control that it disregarded the light. It, the shadow became stronger than the light. And then you feel like this yo-yo that gets dragged back and forth, right? Never knowing what happens next. That's not how it works, you guys. Love yourself first then know that what is outside of you is you. You must stay non-dual. It's the only way. If you are a twin flame, if you even like that, I call it counterpart energy, same, same soul, everything is technically your body, right? But counterpart energy, if you are looking for that, you must be at peace with yourself because the twin flame is your essence in reverse. All of the things you don't recognize about yourself will be true about your partner in order for you to see yourself. What happens when the two meet is they get access to the secrets behind the universe, which is love. But in order to activate this between two people, okay, or what appears to be two people, one must know 
that one is love and act in accordance to Corinthians. No expectations, no jealousy, no arguments, no fights. It just is. Love just is. And it is a byproduct. Okay? Your 3D experience is a byproduct of your mastery of self-love. You will always be on the receiving end of what you are thinking, so start cleaning up how you're thinking. Forgive the next moment because it's not what happens next. It's your blank moment that counts. Start using it wisely. Okay? And more importantly, I'm all about eliminating duality because this is what... You don't do all this work, figure out you're the other person, get here, and then give up on your other person in the sense that you got to remember it's you. You can't be mad at someone if they have acted in accordance to your will for your development. They are innocent. They are always innocent. So are you. This was the exercise. This was the whole purpose of meeting God between the two of you guys. Okay? Because Kelly's so right, you guys. You fall in love with yourself easily when you rec recognize yourself everywhere in the universe. It's not even something you're trying to do. It's just what happens. And then suddenly you're everywhere at once. Everywhere at once. You know? And you can't help but look at another human being with such extreme sense of love because you know you are looking at yourself at a moment in time. When you understand God's state this way, that you cannot be divided, it's never not your body, it, everything is you, and you're at peace with that, truly at peace with that, the byproduct of that is your SP. That's the byproduct. It's a natural outcome. And your SP, whether you know who that is or not, doesn't matter. That's your byproduct. That's what your reward is for loving yourself, for mastering your whole universe at once. You get your counterpart energy, and now two beings act as one. And then you take a really important role in society, because even though you enjoy your life, you have too much on your knowledge now to not serve the world it becomes your mission and that's why most of you are here because if you're really in love with yourself you're going to serve yourself in every way you're going to be kind to yourself you're going to understand that your memory is on display you're going to understand that your partner is going to have to activate some things that you don't want to see sometimes and it's not because they don't love you it's because until you see it, you can't have peace. And when I, you gotta trust me on this, peace is the most important thing you will ever need in a relationship. It goes smoothly this way. So those of you who have been struggling against a story for many years, I'm asking you to take a sincere look at yourselves and honestly answer this question. Can you forgive yourself and your reflection for the things that you ask them to do for your development? If you are incapable of doing this because it's too much, then understand that you can let that person go, but you will still have to work on yourself before you meet another person or that will repeat. That's not pleasant. It gets worse. Okay? And so that's important. Now, if you can sincerely let it go and treat this as if you finally understood you are it, then you stand a chance in this relationship. It's not going to go back sour. It's not going to be an issue because you've clearly, clearly, clearly understood that it is your body. It is your reflection, it is your thoughts on display, and you're gonna be as kind and as loving as you can possibly be to this being, but you first. You first because you are the source of what you see. And when you're really present to that, you are going to have an amazing relationship. 
it solves everything. There's no fears, there's no worries, there's no other women, there's none of that. It's an insignificant fear. Why, when everybody is you, would you worry about another body? It's you. It's you. So that's my talk for today. I apologize that I lost Kelly. Uh, not sure what happened. I think her camera froze. Um, and uh, we'll get better about the sound. I think we're going to start doing Zoom maybe a little bit. Um, I want to make a few more announcements really quick. You guys, I am going to radically alter this color seminar thanks to a friend. Um, I'm going to kind of digitize it a little bit to make it a little user, a little bit more user friendly. And then, um, so I'm going to be having you guys do this, but I'm also going to add a different component. Um, I'm going to be adding Neville lectures, the 1948 lectures, and um, a different component um, that actually teaches you how to use your aura. Because it's one thing to understand how you think, and there's another component to how to use your aura. So between these three things, this color seminar is changing slight direction, still the same thing, but um, it's, it's a very important seminar that I'm planning, you guys. I really want you guys to attend. I'm going to, hopefully, it will be everything you guys hope for. Um, and I encourage uh, even couples, maybe, to take this because it's important to understand how the others think. So um, if you guys are interested in this, this reading is about telling you about your dominant personality traits, how you think spiritually, how you think financially, who you best partner with business-wise, career choices, um, why you think the way you do, why you act the way you do in relationships, why certain colors do not get along in sense of, um, it's like, uh, think of someone like being dreamy and you point them, you put them together with another person that's dreamy, and now there's no anchor because they're just floating in no one's home, this can happen, right? So this is what this seminar is about. Um, I'm going to put a lot of work into it. Um, so I'm also going to start tapering down my calls a little bit to focus on this, but it is going to be unforgettable, you guys. It's... Um, it's a lot bigger than you think going on behind the scenes. Um, but I encourage all of you to join us really soon when we start doing this. I'm working on the documentations and everything soon. Um, we're also going to be starting a podcast, um, Sessions with God. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of different changes and things that I think, for the most part, um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Because um, I was blessed enough to talk to someone who actually asked me this question, and I loved her for it. She said, Cindy, you've been sitting on this knowledge your whole life. And maybe not my whole life, but I did spend the last 20 or 30 years studying every aspect of spirituality in ways that you couldn't even begin to imagine. For someone that's a speed reader, um, and that probably has at least 20,000 books under her belt. <laughs> so I got a lot to teach. You guys, so I'm really looking forward to you guys joining us. Um, we're going to be doing more of these calls. Uh, I want to introduce you to testimonials. I want to introduce you to different people that hold different businesses. I want you guys to really start interacting with one another in a good and positive way because this is truly a family that I'm building. Um, it's a family of liberation because the truth is, if you guys get to this point where you realize you're the intelligence behind 3D, that's it. Everything is instant from there. And uh, it's a good place to live. Yeah? All right, you guys. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and stay tuned. On Friday, it will be Jen and Kelly uh, giving their testimony. And um, it's going to be fun. Um, then we're going to have Maria. We're going to have uh, Drew Sosa. He's a financial planner. I want you guys to kind of see everyone. Um, I'm just going to be asking individuals, um, even Christina McDonald. She's a uh, sound bath healer, and she's phenomenal. And I, I just I want you guys to really get to know the community because there's so many resources that you really deserve to get to know. Um, amazing, incredible people. Um, 
even Angel, she may be watching right now, but she's she's a sports psychologist that helps people, um, you know, she can help kids get into college with their sports and financial psychology. I mean, it's just kind of, do you realize how many beautiful people there are in this community that you guys might can interact and, and really get to know each other? This color project is big for me because I want to show you how your aura works, why you think the way that you do, and actually print out the rainbow where you guys, you know, actually form one. And so I'm looking forward to all of these th new changes um, and working with all of you soon. So thank you again, you guys. Thank you so much. I love you. Bye.